G'day everybody, uh, my name is Mark and today I'm going to review the Hoto Lithium Electric Grinder. It's a rotary tool. Firstly, I'd never actually heard of the brand Hoto until they contacted me. Quick bit of research, more than happy to do a review on their kit. Secondly, I have never used a rotary tool, so I can't make any comparisons of this to any other rotary tool, but we can figure out if this is a handy piece of kit. Hoto is all about aesthetically pleasing tools. Nice case, aesthetically pleasing. Inside the case, also aesthetically pleasing. Inside the kit, you get the rotary tool. As you can see, it is quite small and I guess easy to use like a pen. Comes with the charging base, which is USB-C. The more devices we have with USB-C, the better. Has a little dust shield, which attaches via magnets. Happy days. Also has a little dog claw. You can grind those down. I'm not keen to use that. I'm going to the vet. A little organizer tray with all the different attachments and a set of instructions on how to use this tool. What these instructions don't have is what each individual attachment does. Now for me, I've never used a rotary tool. So out of the box, I've got to jump on and watch some videos where uh, either a couple of pages in here or a link to the device, which I believe is coming very soon anyway on the website. Again, less paper, that's cool. To quickly show me what each of these little attachments does, their intended use, speeds, settings that go with each of those, that would be cool. Minor negative on the charging base, you've got to find somewhere that you're not basically going to knock this thing over. Um, maybe a little wall bracket clip in, that would be better. Or even if the USB plug directly into the tool um, and it could lay flat somewhere or even in the case so you could flip the case over um, while it's charging. I don't work for Hoto. Okay, quick look at all the included attachments you get in this kit. You've got sanding, polishing, cleaning, cutting, engraving, and it even takes a drill bit. It does come with this tiny little spanner, which I reckon I'll lose pretty easy. So let me figure out how all these work. Also, without looking at any videos, try and come up with some decent use cases of what I've got here in front of me. So when I think of all these little attachments, I think of little corrections or doing fiddly little jobs in the shed. The use of the tool is very simple. There is a power on and a rotary speed selection down the bottom. You've got the locking mechanism here for changing your attachments. This small little spanner, like I said, that would be pretty easy to lose. Uh, if you keep it with this kit, maybe not. Uh, I th however, I think this probably could have been a keyless system. So having to find this little doodad to change it over. I don't think these attachments would need a heap of torque. So a keyless finger tight method, I think would probably be a cool improvement on Mark II. So with this rotary tool, I am thinking of how it can help me in the shed. And at the moment, I'm making a lot of mallets. It is a small item, um, sometimes needing very small corrections. One of the things I like to do on my mallets is put my little branded coin in the end of the mallet. These mortises for the coin, they have caused me more grief than just about anything in my shed. I either cut the end of my mallets on the lathe, so the coin is always tight, and I sometimes crack the mallet when I'm tapping that in. Or I have a one inch spade bit, which I put in the drill press and I cut my ends first, but again, it is still just ever so tight on the coins and I have cracked the ends of my mallets. So what I'm thinking, these little spindle sanders on the end of the rotary tool could give me just enough cleaning up inside the mortise here to slot my coins in just beautifully. Okay, don't touch the lock with your finger. That was about 20 seconds of sanding, but as you can see, very quick. Um, just took away the amount that I needed without doing any damage to the nice, perfectly cut circle. You can hear me loading that up a fair bit. This is Aussie hardwood, um, so I just wanted to push into the sides just to see if it would actually bog down to the point if it stopped. Um, it hasn't yet, but we'll keep going. Another use case, so got a little crack here. Um, when I was putting the handle in, um, so I had to use a little bit of CA glue. I don't want to 
go at it with a big piece of sandpaper and scratch up all the finish I've already done. So I think getting in nice and close with these little tools, that again, that's gonna be advantageous for me. It is just cleaned up where I need to clean up. There's no other carnage around the rest of the mallet. So that one use alone, I think, is a seller for me. Okay, let's have a quick look at this wire cleaning brush. It is tiny, so you're not gonna be removing bulk rust with this thing. So little areas uh, that need a little clean up. So I've got this Matic head. It's got a heap of surface rust on it, so it's probably a good one just to see if we can polish off those small bits of rust. That sounds a bit weird. Let's have a quick look at the drill function. I've got a bit of Hardius Vicarious right here, Aussie hardwood. Let's see what it can do. You're not going to be drilling hardy as vicarious with this thing. Let's try some softer woods. I've got a bit of pine this time. I won't be using this as a drill, not its intended purpose. Let me see if it can drill through plastic because that's probably where it might have a decent use case for you in your shed. Handy for plastic, yes. All right, found a tiny screwdriver. I'm gonna try and cut some aluminium with the cutting discs. That cut through that with no drama at all. Anyways, you can see something like this you may have been cutting with your CNC, just knocking out the little bits you need to with a tool like that could have a pretty good use case for you in your shed. Let's have a quick look at a bit of PVC. Not quite sure why it stops, flashes at me, power on, power off and it goes again. Nothing in the instructions on that. Again, no dramas cutting through plastic. Um, so little tiny jobs, workshop hacks, that will be a pretty good use case. I'm just gonna throw the wire brush on again. You might just have that little bit of stubborn glue stopping your clamp. So in a pinch, it removed tiny bits of glue. No dramas, get the clamp back in action. But again, I'm just thinking of small, use cases for this machine. Next up, I've got what I believe is one of the engraving tips. So I'm just gonna give that a bit of a go just for the purpose of branding or putting your name on something. So for ownership, for example. One little negative here, the lock button is actually bouncing off the teeth. Uh, you give it a light press and that goes away. So I'm not sure what sort of mechanism is in there. Um, you can also press on this locking mechanism when the tool is running, um, which that's only plastic, not sure what's underneath. That would probably wear down uh, and make it unserviceable, most likely. Just engraved a little D on there. I don't think you want to be there all day writing a name. That would probably, probably not the right tool for the job um, to do some engraving, but it would definitely get you out of trouble if you just needed to put your initials on something. I'll have a quick go with the paint surface. Hello. That's probably pretty quick and easy. Quick engraving on a painted surface. That's gonna keep the honest people away from your stuff. Okay, this is a very quick review and very much my initial thoughts on the tool. I've just quickly tried to come up with some use cases that are very specific for me. If you work with jewelry, fine pieces, very small stuff, you've probably got a thousand other use cases where you can probably see how a lot of these little attachments are gonna be very advantageous to what you do. The device itself, yes, it is aesthetically pleasing. Um, it doesn't appear to be cheaply made. Uh, it's nice and solid and it does have a decent amount of weight to it. Again, I don't know what this thing is actually gonna be priced at. The, the links will be below for this device as it goes live. My guess is it'll be a more affordable device in its class. Although you do get what you pay for with most tools in your shed, 
Um, I believe this one is priced at an introductory level without being on the cheap and nasty side. In short, I think it's a reasonably cool little tool to have in your shed just to help out with those other little things. And again, for the price point, it's probably gonna be pretty handy for me. Do some more research as you see more creators do some reviews on this tool. You'll be able to form a pretty good opinion whether you think that is a worthy investment in your shed. There's a whole heap of other reviews out there for a lot of Hoto's other tools. You are going to get a better feel for the quality and make of these tools and whether it's something that you want to invest in and have a little bit of a go in your shed. Positives for me, it is a small, lightweight, affordable tool. It lets me do those little jobs and it does those little jobs very well. A lot of the time you find yourself reaching for something that can get in and do something very fiddly. So this again would be that the tool for those sorts of little things. It is aesthetically pleasing. Um, just a couple of obvious negatives. I think the attachment, as long as you taking the tools on and off, as long as you don't lose your little spanner, then you've got no drama. The locking button, the fact that that can bounce off the, the cogs inside um, until you give it a bit of a press to make sure it's seating in the right position. Uh, that's that may not be a great thing assembling some of these attachments is quite fiddly but again it's for doing fiddly little things again not having used the rotary tool i don't know what mechanism they use to attach things like this all the other things buffing cleaning and grinding there is heaps of things here little cleany brush that in itself probably going to be pretty good to get in those hard to reach places I think there is enough here to warrant investigation of this little tool so check out the price point make your own decision go from there. Okay, thanks very much for watching. Thanks very much to Hoto for sending me the little rotary tool. Um, they do have a heap of other tools, also aesthetically pleasing, which you may want to have a look at. Go and see some reviews and see what you think. Okay, thank you very much. See you later.